Hi, I'm Gavin Thompson. I'm the transport campaigner at Friends of the Earth Scotland. We've been working on issues around air pollution and air quality for years and years because it's a huge public health crisis and not enough is being done on it. We know it causes thousands of premature deaths across Scotland every year. Pollution from transport mainly, some other sources as well, which we'll talk about, but mainly from transport. The way we're moving around is causing far too much uh, greenhouse gas emissions, which cause climate change, and it's damaging our health with what we're breathing in. It can damage our heart and our lungs, so conditions, uh, asthma, respiratory conditions, heart conditions, but there's also an emerging evidence base about the damage it does to our brains as well, cognitive function. So we get contacted quite often by individuals or groups who are asking about how they find out about air pollution in their area. And a lot of people think that the data isn't available or the air pollution isn't being monitored. Now, don't get me wrong, there are real shortcomings with the way the air pollution is captured and measured across a lot of areas in Scotland, but there is still a huge amount of data that's in the public domain that you can look at, you can access anytime you want, and that not that many people know about it. So this is just a little video to look at where you get that data, how you might download it, how you might look at it, and how it might benefit you in any campaigns you're working on, any issue you're looking at in your area. So I'm just going to share my screen and talk through some of the websites. So what we're looking at here is scottishairquality.scot. This is a website um, run on behalf of the Scottish Government by scientists and consultants. And there's a load of stuff in here that could be useful for you. And I uh, just want to talk through it a little bit. So scottishairquality.scot. So you can see right here on the homepage, it's showing the latest air pollution levels. Now, this is really important, particularly for people with asthma and other respiratory conditions need to know what the air pollution is like if they're going to go into town that day. If the air pollution is higher than usual, it could really exacerbate their condition. They might want to um, reschedule if they can. Right. So if you um, navigate to, what did I just click on? Latest and forecasts. This gives you a map of Scotland and a, a few different options across the top here. We're only going to be looking at automatic monitoring and NO2 diffusion tube network, which I'll explain a little bit what that means. Other network works is for much rarer uh, pollutants and um, it's only going to be of limited interest, I think. Automatic monitoring means the really big stations that are, uh, they look, sometimes they look a little bit like phone boxes or old police boxes. Uh, sometimes they look a little bit more like kind of uh, power station or, or telephone exchanges. Um, but they're big, visible, they often look at quite a lot of pollutants. That's what we're looking at here. This is the map of them across Scotland. Uh, so you probably know if you're watching this, Hope Street in Glasgow has been the most polluted for many years. So we'll just take a look at that one um, as an example. So it's called Glasgow Curbside here, but it's at the bottom of Hope Street outside Central Station. So the latest pollution level is shown last update, but view full site data, and there's a lot of stuff in here. So it's showing the latest data for the different pollutants. So PM stands for particulate matter, and it basically means particles. These are the tiny particles that we breathe in, and the number relates to the size of them. So PM 2.5, obviously, is much smaller than PM 10. You can get these particles out of the exhaust of vehicles, but also for the much smaller particles like PM 2.5 and smaller than that, um, the whole variety of processes, but not just out of the exhaust, but tires and brakes. And NO2 means nitrogen dioxide. That means diesel pollution. So uh, air pollution coming out of the exhaust of diesel vehicles. Anyway, so we're looking at um, Hope Street in Glasgow, we can get a little graph over um, certain amounts out of time. Let's have a look at so NO2. That's the graph of NO2 on Hope Street for the last 90 days. 
there's lots of different stuff that we can look at. Crucially, because a lot of people like to know where in their local area the monitors are. So site information and site photos is the best for that. That will help you track down. So that's the photo of the of the yeah big big box um, on Hope Street. But um, let's go back because we seen that there was the automatic automatic monitoring network, and then the NO2 diffusion tube network. So you can see that's got loads more. So diffusion tubes are small, fairly cheap when compared to those big telephone box things. Um, little devices and they're monitoring just the diesel pollution that I mentioned, NO2, nitrogen dioxide. And every local authority has a few of these dotted around and is supposed to update and report on their findings every year. Um, so we're just going to zoom in. Let's have a look in Inverness. So and the diffusion tubes, that maybe the monitoring isn't quite as good as those big automatic monitoring stations, but they're still really useful for giving you a picture of what the pollution is like. So this is on Union Street in Inverness. And you can see when we click on it, it gives you the annual, so the annual average, annual mean, going back 10 years. Um, and one of the things about the NO2 diffusion tube readings is that we're not just looking at the, the number, so that's the average of NO2 pollution um, in Inverness for that year, but we're also looking at the trend. So you can see um, there was a drop in 2015 and then a big climb again, and then quite a big climb from 2018 to 2019. So some, sometimes uh, a big start jump like that, it's important to say sometimes that could just be the individual device, you know, something messed up with it. But sometimes that could be about a change that happened locally. You know, I'd be looking at, did a bus route change and suddenly some older, much more polluting buses were going past the, the monitoring site? Um, was there building works, you know, all of those kinds of things, hyper-local. Now, if you're using this information in one of your local projects, campaigns, initiatives, you might know that anyway. Um, and that's really useful to understand. Um, so that's something useful about these diffusion tubes, as you can see a long-term trend. So if you're maybe engaging in a work on a, a local, a, a planning application, for example, and they'll need to take account of air quality and the impact on air quality of the development. Looking at stuff like this, going on the map, seeing what data is near the, the site in question, all of that stuff is really useful. And then for, for more in-depth stuff, if you're a nerd like me, um, you, you can access um, spreadsheets, big spreadsheets of data. If you're not a spreadsheet person, don't worry at all. That's, that's best, just in case you are, is um, if you click on data and maps and then measurement and annual statistics. So this can let you download all of the data collected in those automatic monitoring stations, right? Uh, I'll just quickly show you. Um, so these are all the pollutants. Not every station measures all of these pollutants. Some of them only measure one or two. Um, we're looking at, let's look at nitrogen dioxide on Hope Street in Glasgow for, so you can select period, you know, you can look at yesterday or last year. We're going to look at, um 2019 so the last year before the pandemic before lockdown when the traffic and the air pollution was quite different you know radically affected by lockdown okay so then um now it's down by local authority so we're looking in glasgow city council area city of glasgow and then glasgow curbside and that will give you the option to download or look at um, all of this data for all of that year, all of 2019, along Hope Street. Um, and we'll just take a quick look at that spreadsheet. If you don't like spreadsheets, don't worry. <laughs> you don't need to do this, um, but it might be helpful. So 
it's this is data every hour for the whole year. So there's you know there's thousands. Um, but I think one thing worth pointing out is looking at pollution through through the day. So from midnight to midnight, you can see that there are peaks and troughs. Looking at this, this the third of January, for example, the highest reading that day is. 153.8, that's around three in the afternoon. So that's not necessarily rush hour or anything, or it could be the beginning of rush hour. But on Hope Street, you know, at that time, you're looking at a lot of older buses, HGVs, taxis, a lot of older diesel vehicles. It could just be for whatever reason, a lot of them um, were going up Hope Street around that time. So you can download these spreadsheets and look at uh, trying, you know, get an average for the whole year, get an average for individual months, look at patterns. Again, if you're really immersed in a, a local campaign around planning or land use or transport and you are interested in data, which not everyone is, you can you can download this um, and have a look at it. Just a, a point on that. Um, so we're looking at the 3rd of January there, 153.8, what the... The measurement is is micrograms per cubic meter. So that's 153.8 micrograms per cubic meter. And to give you a sense of how high or low that is, the legal limit value for an annual average is 40. 40 micrograms per cubic meter. So that just for that one hour on that day was four times that average. Okay. Um I think that's enough spreadsheets. Um, but yeah, so that brings us to the end of this this little explanation. But I think just to uh, conclude and say, Friends of Their Scotland has been working on these issues for years and years, supporting grassroots groups, community groups, uh, concerned residents, people with health conditions. So if you're working on something like this, get in touch with us. Uh, info at foe.scot. Tell us what's happening, if we can support in any way, or if um, if you've hit a wall, if you're trying to get stuff happening locally, or if you've got a question about a more technical aspect, like downloading data. That would be great. And that's the end. Thanks very much.